It's the end of 2021. Both DJI and GoPro have given us their latest and their greatest, neither of which feature a one inch sensor. Now that's something lots of us were hoping for or expecting, given that Insta360 did it with the One R almost two years ago. Now I have no doubt that DJI and GoPro have the means and the ability to put a one inch sensor in their action cameras, but I've compiled a list of at least eight reasons why I don't think they're doing it at the moment. I think you'll find it interesting and I think you'll find it might inform your purchasing decisions in future. So let's get into it now. When we look at the traditional camera market, people lust over these big sensor cameras. First of all, because of the light gathering capability that they have, that's something we all want, but also the ease with which you can achieve shallow depth of field, backgrounds out of focus, bokeh, and all that kind of stuff. Looks amazing, looks dead cinematic. I too lust over shallow depth of field. However, in the action camera world, shallow depth of field is our first problem is generally speaking not something that we want or put it another way if we do want it from a camera manufacturer's perspective we're going to have a whole host of knock-on problems that we need to deal with with both the gopro 10 and the dji action 2 users can take it for granted that as long as their subject is more than 12 inches away from the front of their lens everything in that shot will be sharp this is the second issue that camera manufacturers have to consider the minimum focusing distance in the case of the Insta360 ONE R, which does have a one inch sensor, the minimum focusing distance is three feet, it's 90 centimeters. This is one of the compromises that's had to be made to try and deal with that risk of shallow depth of field. Now, 90 centimeters might not sound like much, but it's probably more than the length of your arm if you're vlogging. And given that one of the primary uses of these action cameras is vlogging, it's certainly something that manufacturers have to consider. If keeping everything in focus is a concern, why don't we just ditch the fixed focus on these three cameras and implement some kind of autofocus system, a little bit like we see on a smartphone. If you look at the iPhone's autofocus, it's incredible in video mode, almost instantaneous. Well, here's the thing we have to keep in mind, we're talking about action cameras, and one of the main functions of an action camera is to be virtually indestructible, certainly very durable at least. There's no moving parts inside any of these cameras, and from a focusing perspective, that's why they have fixed focus. The iPhone has a closed loop autofocus system that is vulnerable to high frequency vibrations, impact essentially, so much so that they put out a press release in September saying, don't put your iPhone on the handlebars of a motorbike. The vibrations coming off the engine can damage not only the autofocus motors, but also the optical image stabilization motors. If these manufacturers can come up with an autofocus system that has no moving parts, then I think we might be on to something. But until then, I suspect we'll be stuck with fixed focus in our action cameras. As you've just heard, the iPhone's optical image stabilization does not take kindly to the sustained vibrations that a phone might be exposed to in an action camera environment. Now, fortunately, action cameras have cracked that issue and we have electronic image stabilization, a digital realignment of frames reacting to the gyroscopic data that comes off the printed circuit board and tells us where the device is at any point in time. The issue with electronic image stabilization is that it requires a lot of processing power to digitally realign all of those frames, especially if you want it done in the body of the camera. Now, given that action cameras are meant to be accessible to a broad section of the market, we want our EIS performed in the body of the camera. And that's certainly the expectation set by GoPro when they came out with the Hero 7 and their first incarnation of Hypersmooth. Now, the bigger the sensor, the more processing power required to digitally realign all of those frames. And that's where Insta360 they hit a bit of a brick wall. If you want the best quality image stabilization that they can offer with their one inch mod, you need to do it in post in their proprietary software. I don't have a fundamental problem with going into the Insta360 studio and playing around with the settings, especially when it comes to the 360 camera where you can pick your lens and reframe and all that kind of stuff. That's a lot of fun. But when it comes to the action camera side of things, if the only reason you're going in there is to implement electronic image stabilization, then that's certainly not a benefit. If GoPro were to migrate their hypersmooth system across to a one inch sensor platform, it would require a ton of extra processing power. Now I know we got the GP2 chip with the GoPro 10, but given that so far that's given us some extra frame rates and maybe a slightly more responsive touchscreen, I'm not sure that's the step change that would be required to give us electronic image stabilization in camera with a one inch sensor. 
Next up, we have the issue of rolling shutter. This ties into the subject of processing power again. We don't want rolling shutter effects with our action camera footage, especially given that these cameras are designed to be moved fast when they're on a helmet, for example, or in high intensity environments where there's going to be a lot of movement. We can't afford to have tons and tons of rolling shutter again, bigger sensor is going to require more processing power to do away with that rolling shutter effect. In the fullness of time, I'm sure all of this will happen, by the way, it's just we have even more hurdles to come. Let's say we did manage to get electronic image stabilization in camera on a one inch sensor, and we even got some kind of autofocus system that had no moving parts. It's gonna require a lot of processing power and that's gonna generate a lot of heat. Thermal's quite a topical issue at the moment, especially with the Action 2. Prior to that, the GoPro 10 and the Insta360 ONE R is not uh, out of the woods there on the thermals topic either. All these cameras get very, very hot. They can't dissipate their heat very well. And that takes us on to another subject, which is size. We can deal with thermals if we have big action cameras, but we want small action cameras because they are action cameras. So all of this has to be brought down into a small package that doesn't get too hot. All of that brings me on to the last point, and that is price. These are consumer products at the end of the day, and they have to remain reasonably affordable. Even if it's possible today for DJI GoPro or Insta360 to create a zero compromise one inch sensor action camera, zero compromise, I know we have a one inch sensor action camera here, but a zero compromise one inch sensor action camera, even if it's possible, it's going to be very expensive, and maybe the market's not ready for it. It'll be interesting to see what the future holds. The One R is almost two years old now. It's definitely due an upgrade. Takes the win with that one inch sensor, but at the end of the day, with no in-body stabilization, we are missing something there. And even if you do it in post, the result isn't as good as GoPro's HyperSmooth. That's the honest truth on that one. As for GoPro, well, this is called a Hero 10, but let's be honest, it's a GoPro 9.5. And the development from the Hero 7 up until this point four iterations of the camera, and it hasn't exactly been earth shattering, which has left the door open for all these other competitors. As for DJI, rather than walking through that open door, they've gone a completely different direction and certainly given GoPro a breather. Think what you will of the Action 2, it's different. And as a consequence, a lot of people might still prefer the simplicity of the GoPro form factor. Anyway, that's enough from me for today. I hope you found that interesting and we will see you next time.